the assignment. <laughs> yeah, no, that you should see my, um, I didn't even want to show it to you guys. I tried to make profiterole, which are like little puff pastries, cream filled. <laughs> my video is a disaster. So I was oh. like, I won't even give them my example. Um, but anyway, I will go back and look at that. I'm glad you did it. The next yeah, let me, let me resend it to you. Okay, thanks. It, it went in on the email and you responded, but it was a while back and it was after all the hurricanes and all that. So, oh, you know. It's been crazy. And the truth is I start to forget about this class because we only meet one time a week and I never know who's going to be there. It's um, okay. Yeah. Thanks for being I mean, patient. <laughs> You know, one of the students who never comes to class, she's really, really good. I wonder if she's an English major who you know, Hannah. Does that ring a bell? Hannah, what's her last name? Bennett. Sounds familiar. I don't even know why. Yeah, I, she took it 101 in the other program, the other French um, online platform. Hmm. She was really upset by this new platform because she... <laughs> had gotten used to the other one but like i said the other one is 180 bucks and i just didn't see it as like a good thing to do to you guys and so she's done really well and i wish she came to class but it's optional i think she likes the asynchronous not being in class experience so let's just hit it and um let's go over what this chapter is about mm -hmm. and actually i'm going to stop sharing and i'm going to reshare how are your other classes going um, with the high flex business? Well, um, since we're going to phase three, one is changing into like all of us are going to be in person one day and then we're all going to be on Zoom the other day. So that's that changed. Yeah, yeah it changed. That class is small. That's capstone. Um, everything else is like half and half. And right. I, I don't mind the, the Zoom half and half thing. It's okay. Um, <laughs> I find it, it hard. I'll tell you the I, truth. <laughs> I do. Well, I think I find it's not it very good. Hard to focus. I find it, it, you just, and I know I'm not the only one. You're sitting there and you're just listening to people lecture over Zoom and you're. Oh, really it's terrible. I'm so sorry. Cause that's, yeah, you're not supposed to, like, we know better as professors to stand there and lecture. But this particular medium, it can't be interactive unless there's like one student like you. There's no other way. And uh, yeah. like Martin, Martin does quizzes intermittently and he'll do like online assignments to keep the online people engaged. Um, oh, that's good. But it's really hard. It, it, yeah. I, and I'm, I'm not, I'm glad I'm graduating. <laughs> <laughs> I know, because I don't know if it's going to be better in the spring. Oh, no. um, I'm taking the spring off, but I'm going to grad school. So, <laughs> uh, Did you get your letters of recommendation in and everything? I got yours. I'm waiting for two more, and then I've got everything for grad school. So, Maya, I'm sure you'll get it. Okay, let's, let's get hit the <laughs> chapitre 6, La Ville. On va regarder l'introduction. And tell me if you can't hear it. As you guys can see, I've been in Lyon for about five weeks now, and at first I have to admit the metro was hard to get around. Now it's really easy. The only way I learned is because I learned how to how to use uh, key vocabulary words. You know how to ask for directions. Some examples could be like "Où se trouve la poste?" Where can one find the post office? Or "Il faut traverser la rue." You have to cross the road. Or, or "Droite et gauche." Those are t the two directions, right and left. So good luck on learning your vocabulary in this chapter in La Ville, the city. Voila. So that's what the chapter is about, La Ville. And you probably have um, already learned. <laughs> Done Sorry. Some it's, it's okay. <laughs> yeah. Like, où se trouve. So the, the chapter is more places. So most of you did just fine on the places in on the test, like, je vais à la boulangerie, ou je vais uh, à la boucherie. So this sort of builds on that. Now let's mm -hmm. see, let me get rid of that video. And the, the thing that's a little tricky in this chapter is that we're gonna start doing um, passé composé. And I can't mm -hmm. remember, Caitlin, had you studied French before? Passé composé, 
or is it just French in general? I took French in high French school. French in general. Yeah, did I took you ever some get French to the past school. tense? No. <laughs> yeah. no we so I the did past not. tense is it's very, very, um, there's a lot of moving parts. I'll put it like that. Mm-hmm. So that's coming up in the, gr- and so I, I would be smart because we're going to kind of do this chapter quicker. Notice how um, it's less grammar all in all. So you should probably start on that now. And so I'm going to do a little revision of different kinds of verbs. Let's see, present. So you're introduced to these verbs, attendre, entendre, perdre, rendre, rendre visite à quelqu'un. So that goes all all together, rendre visite à quelqu'un, répondre and vendre. So attendre is to wait. Um, entendre is to listen, perdre, to lose, rendre is, so do you know the expression render unto Caesar? Render. Yeah, to render. Yes. <laughs> so it's to give. Mm-hmm. Rendre visite à quelqu'un, like a rendez-vous, so you mm. rend visite à someone, you render a visit to them. Ah. <laughs> yeah, so rendre just means to give back, je vais vous rendre vos devoirs, I'm going to give back to your homework, mais je vais rendre visite à ma mère. Répondre, that one's pretty easy. Vendre, so think for vendre, um, like a vendor to sell. Mm. So we're going to do a quick review of the verbs that you've already learned, like the ER verbs. Mm -hmm. The last chapter emphasized IR verbs. So there was like grossier, maigrier, to get fatter, to get thinner, finier. I'm trying to think of the other IR verbs that were in there. And then we're going to talk about this third group of verbs. So the ER verbs are the regular verbs. And so just a reminder of how it works. This thing is called your radical. This is your ending. Mm-hmm. And there's a conjugation. So you, mm-hmm. you seem to get this. <laughs> Unlike Good. some other students. Oh, yeah. That's, that's so easy. Once I connected back with it, it I took some refreshing but once I was like, oh yeah, that's, you know. <laughs> so easy, but it isn't so easy in a way, like if you've never thought about language mm-hmm. in terms of verbs changing, and since they don't change a lot in English, it's a little right. complicated, but once you get it, you get it. So and so then here's the IRs that I didn't really emphasize so much in the last chapter, but they are, they're good for talking about food, like je mm-hmm. finis mon plat. Donc, je finis, uh, mm-hmm. tu finis, il finit, nous finissons, vous finissez, elle, okay. il finisse. Finissons. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so just the thing is, like all the other conjugations, the S at the end isn't pronounced, the T isn't pronounced, the ENT, elle finisse, is a it's silent. It's silent. <laughs> yeah. And so here's a bunch of those verbs, choisir, grossir, maigrir, grandir, obéir, à réussir, à rougir. So that's a bunch of the IR verbs, a bunch of examples that you did, but then there's this other verb that we really didn't do, which is a irregular IR verb, and it's vouloir, and mm-hmm. it's very important because it is je voudrais, which is probably an expression you've heard, which is more polite to say, um, je voudrais une boisson. Ah, yeah. Okay. Does, does that make sense? So this is the, so it's a very irregular verb. Je veux, tu veux, il veut, elle veut, nous voulons, nous uh, voulez, uh, vous voulez, il veut, but mm-hmm. the expression you hear a lot is je voudrais, je voudrais une baguette, je voudrais, uh, uh, je ne sais pas, une biscuit, je voudrais une bière. <laughs> so, voulez-vous coucher avec moi is the sad thing that everybody knows. Voulez-vous yeah. coucher? Voulez-vous Maybe coucher? Avoid. Yeah. Avec moi, c'est soi. <laughs> oui, exactement, c'est ça. Donc, uh, <laughs> The polite way is je voudrais ou nous voudrions, but here's just nous voulons du chocolat, tu veux dîner au restaurant, tu voudrais mm-hmm. un pamplemousse, hein? elle veut un tartine. So that's vouloir, which I don't remember teaching this at all. In we didn't do this class. in 101. Um, yeah. No, I've heard this now in France, I've heard this in service. It's, you know, you'd ask, when you ask a question, it was, it'd be, it'd be, il voudrait. Because that would be the it was polite. Um, right, right, right. I didn't catch that then because I didn't know that much French. But Wait, that, something that, stuck. Don't I remember it? But <laughs> yeah, 
-hmm. well, je voudrais un croissant, je voudrais une boisson. It's like a little mm -hmm. stock phrase that even people mm -hmm. who don't speak French, they know that. Yeah. Um, there's other IR verbs, which sortir, partir, dormir. And so these are going to come up, um, yes. especially sortir, partir, avec the passé composé. So to go out, Ask to leave. Dr. White if she'd like some eggs. Would I like so? It's so sweet of your. Well, who was that in the background? My mother. Oh, <laughs> if I'd like some what? Eggs. <laughs> oh my God! Are they fresh eggs from your farm? Yeah, the the les oeufs. Uh, the les oeufs. Les oeufs. Ah, oui, yes, we do have. We have chickens. Um. <laughs> Moi, je voudrais les oeufs, bien sûr. Mm -hmm. Dis merci à ta maman. C'est très gentil. It's <laughs> so sweet. I can bring you some. If, I don't know when you're on campus, though. <laughs> tomorrow. Are you on campus tomorrow? I'm on Monday, I'm, Wednesday, Friday. I'm on campus Monday. Bring some Monday. I, I, you know, there is a place before Raceland that always has a sign up that says fresh eggs. Mm -hmm. So I have driven there um, on 308, stopped and been like, hey, I'm here for the fresh eggs. And they're like, nope, we don't have any today. So I did it <laughs> twice. And then I gave up. And we so... So uh, when, when we went on quarantine, my mother bought like 20 chickens and um, they're just now laying. So they're... <laughs> you know, it's funny that you mentioned that because um, during quarantine, there's a community garden across the street and they bought chickens. So there's these chickens running around my neighborhood. They're very cute, <laughs> but chicken. they don't give me the eggs. <laughs> no, <laughs> I didn't. Those eggs. <laughs> they might sell them too. That's possible. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know what they're doing with their chickens. They're playing with their little dinosaurs over there. <laughs> okay, so anyway, those are IR verbs. And sortir and partir in particular are super important in the passé composé and in the chapter about the city because qu'est-ce qu'on fait dans la ville? On va sortir. On va partir de la maison pour sortir, pour aller danser, etc. So those are good mm -hmm. yeah, verbs. Those are. Mm -hmm. So, je sors, tu sors, il sort, vous sortez, uh, nous sortons, il sort. So, to go out. And then we're finally with the third group. So, the French divide their verbs into the ERs, the IRBs, and then there's this big catch all, which is RE. There's a million kinds of RE verbs. But the mm -hmm. ones that we're going to learn in this chapter are these guys. Yeah. And here's the conjugation. So, j'attends, tu attends. An interesting thing, I'm going to, um, because it's just you today, and I like to bring these things up. So, in um, Cajun, also known as just Louisiana <laughs> French, they never use attendez, they use mm -hmm. espère. Um, mm -hmm. So, espere, so, so let's, yep, yeah, and it is conjugated like a regular. So, espère means to, to hope in standard French, but I don't mm -hmm. know what the relationship is. In hoping and in waiting, I guess, because you're waiting around and hoping. You know? I, I guess I, there's a there's a waiting period in there, so that's got to be something from older French. I would. Yeah, I would exactly, exactly. So, um, so like this could cause a lot of confusion if you said to somebody, "Wait," but the the in Louisiana, it's always espère, espère moi, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and it's just a regular old. Um, so, but if you said to a French speaker from Europe, espérez moi, they be like, yeah, it wouldn't work. That doesn't mean anything. Yeah, that doesn't mean anything. But it's kind of, I find it kind of um, poetic almost, like to yeah. um, espere and espere. And so it has that obnoxious Wait. verb, I mean, the, uh, I, actually this one is like that too. The thing, the accent aigu changes, so it's grab, mm -hmm. grab, grab, do, do, do. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's an RE verb, but in Louisiana, <laughs> it is not used. Right. Um, okay, let me turn the page. Oh, and now that's just going to sit there. So let me um, erase that. I'm like sort of learning how to use. Oops. Okay. <laughs> how do I get rid of that? There we go. Okay, so rend visite. Je rend visite. Je, tu rends visite, ils rendent visite, nous rendons visite, vous rendez visite à qui ce soit, ils rendent visite à leur famille. So I think it's a very easy conjugation, SS, nothing, ONS, easy, mm -hmm. ENT. So it's a little bit easier than um, some other ones. And then here's vend, so like, mm -hmm. je vends des oeufs, tu vends des oeufs, ils vendent des oeufs, nous vendons des oeufs, vous vendez les poules, chickens, ils vendent des poules. Mm -hmm. So now I want you to use entendre, which is to listen. So it sounds a little bit like attendre, but it means 
to listen. Entendre. And so, mm -hmm. yeah. so you're going to have to think, but I know you can do it because you're Caitlin. Um, mm -hmm. What are <laughs> different kinds of music that we, so try to make um, sentences with music. So par exemple, je commence avec, j'entends la musique de um, Journey, which is like an 80s band. <laughs> That's what popped into my mind. <laughs> C'est j'entends la musique de Billie Eilish. Billie Eilish. <laughs> bon, elle est artiste, oui. Donc, uh, um, avec tu, est-ce que tu peux dire tu entends la musique de... Tu entends la musique de Kanye West. <laughs> <laughs> non, je n'entends pas la musique de Kanye West. Uh, mais no. je sais qu'il est le no. mari de Kim Kardashian. Je pense. Mm, yeah. Quelque chose. Mm -hmm. uh, um, donc, il, elle ou on attend la musique? Uh, elle attend la musique de... Si elle attend la musique de... I am losing my music ideas here. I know, it's, it's so weird how when you, like, I, this happens to me even, you know, I'm fluent in French, but when I'm thinking in French of, like, American music... <laughs> what am I thinking American just, music? <laughs> it's like there's two different parts of my brain and they don't connect. No, I, I, I'm actually, I'm thinking of other things at that point. I'm like going, where are my French artists? I know a bunch of those. Um, Il est dans la musique de... Uh, uh, was that artist? Artist. Hold on. You think, and I'm gonna um, I'm gonna put a bunch of French artists on the screen. Yeah, I was thinking about the one we listened to in um, in French 101. What was his name? Oh, um, Khaled. Ha Khaled. Yes. We. Zamash. <laughs> okay. Well, see you. I'm just gonna put up these artists and see if you know who this is. You know, yeah. She's probably the most famous one. Yeah, I know her. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, and then this is another one, Jacques Brel. Yeah, we listened to Jacques him. Brel in French 101. I remember him. There. Voici quelques artistes très célèbres. Donc, um, on va revenir là. Tu as des idées maintenant. Donc, mm -hmm. um, Oh, were we on on or new? I can't remember. We were on, uh, we did on, il, il, elle, on, on did new, uh, nous, nous entendrons, nous entendrons, uh, non, nous entendrons, uh, nous entendons, oui, don, <laughs> there's a don, ah, it was close, oui. <laughs> nous entendons, uh, nous entendons la musique de la Mozart, de Mozart, uh, bien. The Mozart. <laughs> My uh, husband he perked up when he heard Mozart. <laughs> <laughs> it's actually a, a French musical. I don't know if you know that based on Mozart. I didn't. Um, no, I'd have to send you that. It was one of my first finds in high school when I was taking French, and it's a French Mozart pop opera. <laughs> Sounds very and European. It's very European. <laughs> it is like. Yeah, I'd love to know about that. I'll have to send you that. Uh, okay, avec vous. Vous. Uh, oh, wait. Uh, vous. Is, is vous entendez? Entendez? Très bien. Uh, vous entendez la musique de. Uh, musique? Uh, de. I had a musician in my head. Ah, uh, Julie Zanetti. Ok, je n'entends pas la musique de Julie Zanetti. Les Françaises ou les Américaines? Les Françaises, euh, les pop. Ah, c'est bien. Ok, je vais les chercher. Alors, le dernier, il, elle, qui est un peu difficile, donc réfléchissez bien. Il, elle. Elle, entend donc. <rire> donc, donc, de, euh, Ah, de, 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 there's that tricky one. Mm -hmm. um, ils ont, and it's got a silent sound. E-N-T is silent. Donc, ils e ont. Mm -hmm. So, entendez. Uh, Entendre. Oh, even sharper than that. Okay. Entendre. Entendre. 
Gotcha. I want to say that E. It's a Cajun in me. <laughs> yeah. So it's called an E mué, a mute E. Donc, ils entendent the. I actually think that the tendency to like put an A it comes from the Spanish, which is just all around us all the time. And it's like mm -hmm. sort of bleeding over into French. So, <laughs> uh, which. I mean, it's just a demographic shift in the United States and in Louisiana. There used to be more French speakers, but now uh -huh. I'm guessing there's more. Um, in, in Cajun French, you'll hear it all the time, I'm sure. I know you hear it where those out that when you get a, a spelling like that, you say it or you'll yeah, pronounce yeah, it right. Yeah, and yeah. that's not technically correct. Yeah. Uh, no, well, it's 18th century. Um, that is true. <laughs> that certain older I don't know. I'm not a linguist. I don't know why the ENT disappeared, but like the language got codified in the uh, end of the 18th, beginning of the 19th century. But the Louisianans came here before that. And so certain really old structures are still in the Louisiana French. Yep. Okay, so let's see. Usually this goes really badly, Caitlin, because um, no one has any clue, but let's see what you know here. Vous connaissez Paris? Donc, est-ce que les phrases suivantes sont vraies ou fausses? Donc, les Champs-Élysées, c'est une avenue. Vrai. 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 <laughs> Vrai. Uh, la Sorbonne est un lycée. Huh? La Sorbonne est un lycée. So, a lycée is a high school. Yeah. Lycée, la Sorbonne. Faux? C'est faux. Mm -hmm. Très bien. Faux. Um, okay, Charles de Gaulle est une gare. Charles de Gaulle est une gare. Gare. Une gare. Vrai. Non, mm. c'est faux. C'est faux? Que, oui, c'est faux. Charles de Gaulle, c'est l'aéroport et la gare. Ah, l'aéroport. And I should know that. I flew through Charles de Gaulle. Oui. <laughs> bon, <laughs> le problème, c'est le mot gare. Qu'est-ce que c'est? Il y a le gardeneur, garde lion, garde. Oh, God. Ah, I got it, I got it. <laughs> um, la comédie française est un théâtre. Vrai? Mm -hmm. C'est vrai. vrai. It's one of the oldest um, theaters in the country, and mm -hmm. it is un théâtre. Voilà. Le Ritz est un hôtel. Le Ritz est un hôtel. Vrai. Oui, c'est vrai. C'est vrai. Très vrai. <laughs> la cathédrale de Notre Dame se trouve dans la banlieue. So this is a really important word. La banlieue is the suburbs. And la cathédrale de Notre Dame. Est-ce que c'est dans la banlieue? I want to say faux. C'est faux. C'est au centre. C'est très faux. Voilà. The, the Latin quarter is not. <laughs> dans la banlieue. Okay, no, it's. So, it's yeah the latin corner it's, it's center so this yeah. is a teeny weeny map of um you see it down here this mm -hmm. is a map oh and, look that's, i see where i stayed <laughs> <laughs> do you know what arrondissement you stayed in arrondissement uh the 13th Très bien, le 13e, uh, la rive droite that's the rich it, side of town it was uh there was a lot of riding around the metro <laughs> that's <laughs> clear um, mm -hmm. So those are little trains that are telling you there are five um, different gares. So, and these are the arrondissements. So the oh. next question is, il y a 20 arrondissements à Paris. Il y a 20 à faux. <laughs> non, c'est vrai, c'est vrai. C'est vrai? Oh, c'est oui, bien, vrai. oh, bien. Mm -hmm. Oh, bien, bien. Ah. Oui, c'est vrai. And we're going to oh, watch a sweet. little video on, um, on the arrondissements. Le fleuve qui traverse Paris s'appelle la Loire. Le fleuve qui traverse Paris s'appelle la, oh, la Loire. La Loire? La Loire. La Loire. Do you remember what fleuve is? Fleuve? That's river. Um, and a uh, uh, faux. C'est faux, très bien. La Seine. C'est uh, la Seine. La Seine, très <laughs> bien. <laughs> Excellent. Le Louvre est un grand musée. Vrai. 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 Ça, c'est vrai. Vrai, vrai, vrai. La Tour d'Argent. And so this one, I don't even know. I think I've only heard of it. La Tour d'Argent. What is the question? Hold on, let me put it back on. C'est un restaurant élégant. Uh, I don't know that one. 
Um, even though I've looked this up because just La Tour, I think it's an old restaurant, but it's not really the, um, it's an emblematic, oh no, it looks pretty elegant to me. That looks, I would say vrai there because it yeah. looks, but then that's weird in France because I, sometimes things that look fancy to me in France, I'd get talk Or just regular. That. This looks right. pretty elegant though. <laughs> right. But and now that looks nice. Yeah. They have like a fancy, and look, they got the English speaking website so you know the tourists can come look at yeah you. and then i wonder if they have a michelin star so there's mm. uh, my husband knew he said one star because <laughs> <laughs> he's in hosp hospitality yeah. okay so let's look quickly at this video about um Paris. yeah the arrondissement Paris est un escargot Paris est un escargot avec ce titre uh, voila. So mm -hmm. this is... <laughs> you can see it and hear it? Yep. Vous savez que Paris est divisé en 20 arrondissements. Mais savez-vous de quand date cette organisation? Séverine Bavon nous raconte l'histoire des arrondissements parisiens. Hmm. Does not have subtitles. Paris est un escargot. Okay. Voilà. Certes, Paris ne mange pas de salade, mais c'est un escargot quand même. Un escargot d'arrondissement. Un arrondissement, c'est une division administrative avec à sa tête un maire élu. À Paris, il y en a 20, numérotés de 1 à 20, qui forment une spirale qui part du centre, un escargot. Situons ensemble dans ce dédale quelques lieux connus de tous. Le musée du Louvre se trouve dans le premier arrondissement. La tour Eiffel dans le 7e, les champs élysées sont dans le 8e et le Sacré-Cœur dans le 18e. Mais pour les Parisiens, les arrondissements ne sont pas uniquement des zones administratives ou géographiques. Ce sont des univers. Chaque numéro d'arrondissement évoque à tout Parisien quelques clichés bien définis. À l'ouest, il y a les riches. Si le 7e, le 8e et le 15e arrondissement sont bien lotis, c'est le 16e qui est l'archétype de l'arrondissement bourgeois, avec ses beaux immeubles et ses rues calmes, où se côtoient des vieilles dames aux caniches toilettées et des hommes d'affaires pressés. On dit d'ailleurs, pour décrire une personne chic, guindée, qu'elle fait très 16e. Comme dans la plupart des grandes villes européennes, les arrondissements les plus pauvres, eux, se trouvent au nord-est de la ville. Dans nos latitudes, les vents soufflant principalement d'ouest en est, la répartition de la population se serait rapidement opérée lors de l'industrialisation du XIXe siècle. À l'ouest, la bourgeoisie protégée des fumées, à l'est, les ouvriers sous la fumée. Ainsi, on trouve toujours les Parisiens les plus populaires, ainsi que beaucoup d'immigrés du Maghreb, d'Asie ou d'Afrique noire, dans les 18e, 19e et 20e arrondissements. Le 13e Pour le Parisien, c'est Chinatown. Il vous parlera des supermarchés asiatiques, des restaurants exotiques et du fameux défilé du Nouvel An chinois. Le 11e, lui, est le lieu branché par excellence. Magasins bio, réparateurs de vélos et ateliers d'artistes attirent des populations jeunes et créatives. Inutile de vous dire que, dans tous ces arrondissements, on trouve aussi des gens normaux qui résistent à tous ces clichés. Paris n'a pas toujours été un escargot. Lorsque les arrondissements sont créés en 1795, la ville est plus petite et il n'y en a que 12, numérotés de gauche à droite et répartis en deux lignes séparées par la Seine. En 1860, alors que le préfet Haussmann dirige d'immenses travaux dans Paris, la ville s'agrandit en annexant les communes limitrophes. Il faut alors créer de nouveaux arrondissements. On redécoupe, on recompose. Un premier schéma attribue le numéro 13 à l'actuel 16e. Mais cela ne plaît pas du tout à ses habitants riches et influents. Pourquoi Parce qu'à l'époque existe une expression, se marier à la mairie du 13e arrondissement. Comme le 13e arrondissement n'existe pas encore, ça veut dire ironiquement vivre ensemble sans être marié, donc en concubinage. Impensable pour la bonne société de l'Ouest d'être associée à cette idée si inconvenante. 
on adopte finalement une disposition en spirale et on attribue le numéro 13 à un arrondissement plus populaire. Cette disposition n'a pas changé depuis 1860, même si l'on surnomme parfois certaines villes le 21e arrondissement. Deauville, par exemple, station balnéaire normande à 1h30 de Paris, où l'on trouve le week-end presque plus de Parisiens que de Deauvillais. Mais en réalité, l'escargot va-t-il s'agrandir encore il semble que l'avenir de Paris se prépare actuellement dans les bureaux du président de la République. Nicolas Sarkozy rêve du Grand Paris. Le Grand Paris, encore au stade d'ébauche, viserait à créer une vaste métropole en reliant Paris et ses banlieues. Et ça serait pour quand ce grand projet Dans les années 2020. Et oui, c'est lent, un escargot. <rire> Ok, so there's this cute video that says Paris is an escargot. Uh, I noticed that you were willing to try escargot in your test, you said. Um, yes, I've actually, it was one of the few things when I was traveling in Paris, I couldn't find or maybe just lucked out not finding a place that served it. Yeah, um, it's a bit, it's a rarefied thing, but. You'd it, think for tourists they would have made it a little more, but like I shopped around and there was... And I did get some really good duck. Well, They're if you really come good. in New Orleans, I know a few places that regularly have it. And I just ha had re <laughs> food at a restaurant called Justine. Just, and Justine. they had something called, it was so funny. I was like, I've got to try this. I have no idea what it is. They called them oysters of the garden. <laughs> and so I was like, I'll have the oysters of the garden. What is that? And they're like, Snails. snails and yeah it snails. was good but um there are a few restaurants that regularly serve escargot so it's when not hard to find you know yeah, it's i could see where in france that would not be because i'm um, also so many people are grossed out by it <laughs> that they probably don't serve it to um tourists I know. yeah I, louisianans I, you guys eat everything <laughs> i is if it crawls i'll eat it so you know it's like a crawfish I see no difference. <laughs> no, there's no difference. They're both so, little crustaceans. Yeah, no, I would eat it. I had no problem with that. Interestingly, too, in, in the video, because I'd mentioned in my essay, I think it was in the bigger essay, the Chinese food that I'd gotten in France. Uh, 13th at his dismal is Chinatown. Mm -hmm. That's why I was finding so much Chinese food. I did not realize that. Oh, uh, that's so interesting because you did say that. J'aime la cuisine mm -hmm. uh, chinoise. And chinoise. I was like, they had, yeah. there was tons of Chinese and they put them in these little packets, like it's a sealed, vacuum sealed little packet. Huh. And it was, it was so different from Chinese food here. It was good. I, yeah. I, I, I was surprised. <laughs> I wonder if it's more similar to Chinese food in um, China than with America. more veggies way yeah. more veggies and more shrimp <laughs> yeah. interesting yeah i mean everything that, well for one there's not that many chinese people in louisiana in the first place so a lot of the chinese mm -hmm. restaurants are run by um vietnamese so mm -hmm. i and it's this kind of combination of like just standard chinese fare but then the, you go to the buffet and there's a bunch of crawfish which, which is fine but who knows if that is right. chinese. chinese food americanized chinese food and it's off topic um we talked about this in another class is um it's kind of americanized chinese food is its own thing and it's a completely different cuisine yeah than chinese, food. chinese food yeah that's what i hear and mm -hmm. i've been eating a lot of american chinese food to the point, it's something that like I don't really like now because I think I eat so much bad Chinese food. <laughs> it's Chinese one. food. Yeah, but I have a Chinese cousin, and she cooks beautifully, and it's really good. And mm -hmm. it's it's kind of similar to the thing. She makes fried rice, and it's just like oh, okay, mm. fried rice. It really is Chinese. Anywho, I going back to the video. So mm -hmm. why is it that they say it's an escargot? Did you follow that part? Um. I follow it. I kind of got it. I was getting every other word. It was the shape, I think. Absolutely. The, mm -hmm. Absolutely. That's it. So here you can see that it is one, two, three, four, five, six, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So it, that's why it's a, it's a spiral like the shell. A spiral of the shell. Yeah. Yeah. That's and then the 13th part is so complicated. So did you notice they um, said that there was this thing about getting married in the 13th, but then yeah. it was it was a class culture thing. I was picking up some of like every other word there. So there used point. to not be a 13th. There mm -hmm. used to be nothing and it ended at 12. And so 
people would say in a snobby kind of way, oh, they got married in the 13th, meaning they did not marry because there's no 13th. So then they put a 13th over here by the Seziem, and that was not popular because that's where like the chic people are. So the French have a weird thing with the number 13 yeah. and it ended up over here. And so this word populaire, les classes populaires, so it doesn't mean popular, it means like working class. And yeah, so that's, that's what I gathered. <laughs> and then there was a part about the smoke. So in the um, part over here, the Western side of Paris, it's less smoky and, and on the, eastern side and that's actually true in many cities that the eastern side because weather goes from west to east it's like the smoky dirtier part of the city yeah that's and then it was said like there's this you know arrondissement where is the chic one and there's the more like artist one so mm -hmm. um this is where notre dame is on the island in the seine right there and um of course it burnt two years ago so they, the rebuilding they opened, they just reopened her quarter again Oh, did they? They just did. I actually donated. When oh, I did too, I, a little I, bit. I don't know. I was just, I was upset. So I did donate and they sent me emails and they just reopened their quarter to the people. Um, yeah, the, I remember the day very distinctly that it happened and I immediately like, I was like, oh, pitch in, but I haven't gotten any emails saying like <laughs> you they gave to. emailed me, I don't know, but they do contact me with some information about what they're doing with the updates because I visited the Notre Dame Cathedral and it's so. It's amazing. Beautiful. Yeah. It is just groundbreaking. <laughs> exactly it's mind-blowing um okay so again the chapter is about the city and one of the things that's hard to understand about paris when you come from the united states in europe the banlieue okay so the suburbs are usually not very pleasant so i'm going to try to find like a classic picture of banlieue parisienne parisienne so that the banlieue looks like this, whereas in the United States, the suburbs kind of connote yards and yeah, so the banlieue, um, the rich people live in the city and the poorer people live in the banlieue. And actually it's changing in America a little bit, like um, there now are like poor and working class suburbs more than there used to be. Okay, so on va regarder cet exercice-là. Um, normalement, vous connaissez parce que I, I think we covered some of these and since you've been to France, I don't think we need to go over the vocabulary. So let's see <laughs> what you can pull out of here. So pour voir un match de foot. Est-ce qu'on va au parc, à l'église, à l'aéroport? The first one is pour voir un match de foot. The, the stadium. Au <laughs> stade, um, très bien. Au stade, donc i au stade. Um, actually, when I was in Paris, it was the time Paris was hosting um, the Coupe du Monde. The, yeah, it was in 2016. And so when I got up on the Eiffel Tower, you could see the whole stadium. Oh my God. It, yeah, that, that was a historic I, year to be there. It was pretty, I didn't plan that at all. And I just happened to be there the year not only Paris was hosting, they won. Um, yeah, <laughs> right, France right, won. that's right. Yeah, but it was it, um, who Spain did they play? Spain. Spain. Spain, yeah, I was in England in 2018, and I think it was France, Croatia. It was this very interesting, like, and England might have been in the mix at the last minute, but then England was kicked out. So anyway, it's, it's fun to be in a country when like a huge thing like that is happening. Got me into European soccer. That was yeah, cool. I'm not though. <laughs> I have a bunch of friends who really are. It's like, that's their thing. Okay. Quand on envie de voyager en train, où est-ce qu'on va? Envie de voyager en train. But in, for some reason, your volume went down. Can you, um, either you're covering your mic. I'm not sure. It did that earlier in my class. Yeah, again, it's still not loud. Can you see? I don't know if it's, I wonder if it is Zoom, actually. Might be. Because it has been normal this whole time. Yeah, first you were fine, and then all of a sudden. It did it, unless I'm, unless it's my internet. 
Yeah, it could be. I can hear you better now, though. Okay. Um, let me see. C'est quoi un envie de voyager en train? It wouldn't be au pont, I don't think. Ah, à la gare. Um, okay. <laughs> So now you're super clear. Now I have to turn my volume down because you're loud. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's my I think it's my internet. I'm really Probably. suspicious of my internet. Why don't you read the um all of these and contrave this information so this set tourist sur um oh um al a la office de tourism tourism tourisme. Turisme. I uh, spent a lot of time there. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure. And they well, were I very. See. The office de, de tourisme is usually kind of. I mean, they they're they're very good at providing people all the things. They I were wonder, mostly mostly worried about people getting lost on the metro, uh, which that happens. you can do. Yes. Um, pour rendez-vous romantique, romantique, uh, romantique. Ah, well, uh, I'm you see, would be my answer. <laughs> ah, oui, c'est bon. C'est un you see. Oui. Uh, à la bibliothèque, yes. Uh, à la bibliothèque. Uh, uh, but... bibliothèque. Uh, the, that would be my answer, but I don't know if that's the answer they're looking for. No, that would not be the French romantic place, but that's, <laughs> I, 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 that's very English major of you. So <laughs> that's, it's, it's allowed. As a, <laughs> that counts for you. Uh, but uh, that Paul, uh, the, for five. Five. Um, uh, um, à la biblio uh, H is the answer for um. We oui, uh, à la bibliothèque. Yeah, that's it's a livre. Quand inspiration la comme elle est nature en nature um um a uh, park. Um, Très bien. As a, a park. Exactly. Um, pour beau. Un café, un café, un café. <laughs> okay, exactly. Un café, un café. I'll tell you, um, I went to England once with some French students. So I was like, I'm going to take you abroad. And it was to England of all places. And my <laughs> colleague who was a French speaker, very fluent in English. She had spent a ton of time in Florida, but like her English is, it's, it's probably like my French, like it's good, but like there are certain things that are just like stuck. She would call every cafe in England. She'd say, let's go to the coffee. And I was like, the cafe. <laughs> <laughs> so cute. Coffee. I mean, let's go to the coffee. That's correct. That's technically, though it's more tea over there than coffee. <laughs> yeah. Although, you know, they, the, there's, there's good coffee. England is, is very is good coffee. coffee. Yeah. Very okay. good coffee. Uh, as a pop visit on exposition at as a au musée. Au musée. Uh, uh, uh pour prendre le avion. Ah, that's le aéroport. Oh, oui, très bien. It's a, it's a grand aéroport, le char, le char du gars. Oui, <laughs> um, pour aller à la. Mm -hmm. oh, a la mess. I'm not going to tell you what that is because you'll oh, figure it out. Burn me. My dog is having a burn. It's okay. It's okay. Hold on I one second. Know. He's. You got him, hun? I think somebody's banging on the door. Okay. Oh, yes. Um. Uh, that would be. Um. Uh, oh, wait. Ale el gase el gas el. That's it's B. Uh -huh. <laughs> Allegies. That Allegies. Allegies. What does that mean? I've never seen that word before. The mess? Okay. Me well, both, yeah. Okay, mm. the église is the church and la mess ah. is the mass. But mass. No, but, right, let me ask my husband really quickly why it's a mass. What does mass, mess mean in Latin? Mass comes from uh, at the very end of the Latin mass. Yes. The priest would say, Missa est, meaning it is said. Oh, okay. So yes, at the end of the mass, because he used to teach Latin, you know, okay. say, they would say misa est, which is the message has been sent. So the thing got to be known as it's the message, the mass. Le yes. mass. Ah, that's so interesting. I know. Once I you learn Latin, like it made me so mad. He really doesn't speak French fluently, but he couldn't, he understood everything better than me because of the Latin. 
honestly, now that I know French, I can read Latin better. So, <laughs> I mean, it works it's, both ways, but works Latin both ways. is really hard. Latin, Latin is, is hard. hard. I wish Nichols taught a Latin class. I would take <laughs> You're it. You're the hard only days. student that I know I'm the it. only student that would take <laughs> Latin, but I would take Except it. Except there'd be the hardcore Catholics that are really into Latin. Some of them would take it. Would it would be me and them. <laughs> yes, it would be you and them. So what I'm going to ask you to do is, um, let's see what time it is. Yeah, we still have time. So here's these RE verbs. Um, there's vond, but the other ones are the ones we went over. So let me pull those up so you can see them again. Um, and we're, I have to tell my husband that you just said that. A student just said, I wish they offered Latin at Nichols <laughs> that I said she's the only one. <laughs> Probably am. Then again, Perkins and I were talking about that in Capstone. We were reviewing other curriculums from other colleges because we have to build our own curriculum. And oh, cool. like, yeah, it's part of, they make us build a curriculum and they make us build a syllabus, which I think is really, really smart. Yeah, you need to know to do those things if you're going to grad school. Yeah, absolutely. So we look at John Hopkins University and their English oh, department yeah. and they have required like 19 hours of whatever language you pick. Okay, so check this out. <laughs> that is called normal. Nichols, they, they made the, right. they dumbed it down so much. And that's mm -hmm. why I teach English now. It's because they're like, we don't know what you're gonna do because we made it so no one needs a language. Right, yes. we were talking about you that. Will, if you end up at a very good school, you will be at a disadvantage because of the only taking two to the only taking six hours of French. Yeah. Yeah. Well that, and because they also don't emphasize just as much, um, like sort of rigorous. Do you Actually, have to write a senior thesis for example? For English? Yes. Yeah. That's good. Okay. So like there's that, that's good, but I know beyond the foreign languages, there's just like, um, Nichols made it easy. So a lot of grad schools want, some understanding and i emma and i were talking about that like both of us are kind of coming in at a disadvantage of looking at grad school because they require more from well, some of now they, i know well maybe someday it'll be put back into the um <laughs> curriculum but, but i don't see it happening at nichols anytime soon okay yeah. so here's the verbs. verbs yep the re's the re's attendre entendre perdre rendre visible à répondre et vendre so to um to wait to hear, to lose, to, to give back, to give a visit to, to respond and to sell. So those are those. And then we're gonna go back to the book as soon as I can get over there. Exit full screen. Boop, 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 boop. Um, and let me go back to the book. Okay, Barnaby. Okay, Barnaby. He was doing so well. <laughs> now he's having a little <laughs> meltdown. Okay, so what verb, what RE verb would you associate with le téléphone? I don't... Hang on, let me pull them up. Yep. Oh, did you have them pulled up? Because it's on um, my I... screen. Oh, you didn't see them. Let's see. I did have them pulled up, but I can't do both. So see if you can find it in your book. Um, it's the one that is sounds a lot like English, though. Répondre. Répondre. Yeah, that one's easy. No, hang on. Yeah. I'm just going to pull it up on my yeah. own. A lot of times I have to anyway, because Zoom can only do so many so things. So much, yeah. I Again, I'm not crazy about the Zoom. <laughs> oh, yeah, no, it's a nightmare. I'm yeah. not, like, technically savvy savvy, but I cannot imagine. I have these colleagues that they don't... They just they don't, know what, don't know what they're doing. I, <laughs> yeah. I, I, I'm keeping notes on this as I go into grad school because I know it's going to factor in when I start teaching. It's absolutely going to factor. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. In fact, you haven't met the new French professor. We have a new French professor. Mm -mm, I have to admit. Uh, well, he's Mr. Chris Monnier, lovely, lovely guy, getting oh, his doctorate degree from Oxford, and he doesn't know how to do any of this. Oh, so he's no. First semester teaching. <laughs> Yeah, you should try to meet him because he, um, don't you do some um, earlier stuff? Like Chris really likes Shakespeare and mm -hmm. Renaissance. Like Wait, I don't do any of that. what's his name? Chris Monnier. He came speak in one of my classes. I know, but I did meet him <laughs> and I corrected him on something. <laughs> Good for you. He, he um, was saying that there were no female poets in the 18th century 
And I'm like, that's not true. Good for you. Yeah, I knew, I knew that like, you know, those earlier things that I don't know, but I would I, think that baby. there would be poets and um, novelists who were women in French that were Christian and like, anyway. Okay, okay so, the so, telephone on répond au telephone. So what do we uh, do with the bus? Um, I'm still trying to pull it up. Hang on. It's not, do you have the chapter linked on? I don't. Uh-oh, that's gonna, so let me, um, let me see if I can send it to you in, in the I'm sorry. In the <laughs> I'm making this difficult. Oh, it'd be entendre. Uh, yeah, on, it would be. On day. I, yeah, <laughs> that would be it. Um, and, For some and, reason, it's not linked on the new page. Or maybe I'm just not seeing it. No, it's not. It's partially because um, I, I just assume that everyone knows how to get there. But Ponce Interactive is very user unfriendly. So I'm going to send you the link in the chat and we're, we only have a couple more minutes. Connor's always, if we go over a little bit, Connor's always late for my other class. Oh, is she? That's funny. She's like 10 minutes late. You know, <laughs> when, it, when we have coffee or just do things, she's always late. She's just constantly late. That's she's reassuring. late for class too. Yeah. So I love Were you Connor. able to click on the link? Yes, it's opening okay. now. Okay. And so I'm, I'm the about... verbs are going to be at the beginning of the chapter in, in the, um, there we go. Should be if um, you if you're late, then you should tell her. Oh, that's funny. I'm late. You're always late, and I have this verified from Doctor White. <laughs> <laughs> She's always a little late. Always, I know. It's, it's very ah. French, actually, to be late. She's she's a charmer. I'm in her creative writing class right now. So <laughs> yeah, I like her a lot. All right, so all right, um, now I got so, it. You got the telephone, the booth, and magazine. Donc. Okay. Uh, this is uh, le téléphone. On 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 répond. On 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 ton to listen and then there's a to wait. They say on magasin, uh, on magasin, uh, is it viande or vende? Vende, vende, vende. Uh, let me pull that one up as a big word because my okay. eyes are just not good for that. Uh, le patience, le patience, patience. Ah, uh, oh, <laughs> uh, 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 piandre, pon, pi, pon, per, ton, <laughs> to lose, um, to lose one's patience. Yes, so the, to lose is, you're, you're close, that does begin with a P. Per, Pair. Pair. Ah, yeah. there we go. That one is tricky. Perdition. I don't perdition. know what perdition is. Yeah, I don't know what that means in English, but I know it's got to be related. No, I, I, I connected it. I just was like, okay, I know what I'm saying here, but the word is a little tricky. Yeah. Um, yeah. Le musique. Le musique. Um, entendre. Um, mm -hmm. uh, le divorce. Le divorce. I know that word. Uh, Le divorce. Uh, le devoir, your homework. Le devoir. You ah, le devoir. Ah, le devoir. Ah, le devoir. Um, am I forgetting what the word is? Because <laughs> I don't emphasize them. I it's need to okay. make the devoir uh, more front and center. Le, le devoir. Uh, le devoir oh. would be... Uh, homework. 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 <laughs> But what's the word that is associated? That one, um, uh, it's not actually coming to my mind. Let's see, attend. Uh, uh, it wouldn't be um, respond. I am pour répondre. Oh, oh respond? no, 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 oh. rendre. Because oh, rendre. rendre. I was just thinking that and I second guessed myself. <laughs> oh. On se rendre. On rendre les devoirs. On rendre les devoirs au professeur. Ah, that's why. <laughs> I, I second guessed myself. Uh, on surprise. Uh, that's surprise. a weird. On surprise. That's a weird one. Oh, uh, rien de visite. Uh, rien de visite. To, uh, 
Um, oui, on peut rendre visite comme surprise. Comme surprise, ah, comme surprise. Oui. Comme surprise. Mm -hmm. um, mes, mes parents, mes parents uh, ont un temps à uh, attendre. Mm -hmm. uh, you could, you could, uh, there's actually any number of these that would work. Oui, beaucoup. Except for vendre. Non, on ne peut pas vendre ses parents. <laughs> It's, it's not appropriate. <laughs> Exactement. OK, donc ici, c'est le contraire. Donc, trouver le contraire à trouver. So, trouver, I found. Alors, so, trouver is, means I found. And you should think about the troubadours because they were supposedly going about um, finding things and then sort of singing it. Like, that's why the, the word troubadour and... Mm -hmm. Trouvé is the same word. Mm -hmm. So the opposite with an RE verb would be would be um per um pair pair um pair yeah pair, pair, pair. 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 Mm -hmm. um achete oh wait achete was j'achète un achète j'achète un téléphone téléphone j'achète quand j'achète des souvenirs quand je voyage Yeah, um, a shit would be, uh, it would be respond. I'm, not, I'm probably thinking incorrectly here. I should say is to buy. Uh, to buy, ah, to, and then is it, then is, um, the vion, it is vind. Um, vendre. Vendre. <laughs> vendre. Vendre. How about poser une question? Ah, uh, poser une question. Ah, uh, respond. Mm. Très bien. Monter. Monter. Monter is to go up. To go up, ah, to <laughs> monte. It wouldn't be. It's. I, I'm trying to think of it. It's in the vocabulary. It wouldn't sure. be it entend, but that would be weird. No. No. It, oh, it isn't in the vocabulary. Oh. Okay, they threw you a curveball on that one. <laughs> I don't have to go down. <laughs> <laughs> it's descendre. Descendre. Ah, see that makes sense. Mm -hmm. I can see where monte that would descendre. fit. Yep. Okay. So because we're going to be fast, I'm going to say this um, so that people who watch the hour long, I, I don't know, I get the impression some students are tuning in and some are not. So this is going to be a pretty quick chapter. So next mm -hmm. week, there's going to be a quiz on those RE verbs and it'll be the same as before. Like you'll, you can look it up and find the answers. I can't figure out a different way to do that. There's also going to be next week, I want everybody to do the um, vocabulaire en context, and then I'll send out an email that explains um, the petit projet for this mm -hmm. week. And it's to take note of things that are in French around Thibodeau or Homa, wherever you live, Raceland, and oh, to write them so down. Many. There's so many, right? There's Thank so many you. in Raceland. Oh, of course there's so there are. many. Yeah, <laughs> and, but you know what? I have had really um, not great luck in a couple of classes ago. People are like, I couldn't find anything. I'm like, you're not looking. So I will send that out in an email. But um, yes, next week, a bunch of stuff is due because then the week after we're going to have the test because I, I just want oh, to go through because it's, it's already midterm. I can't quite wrap my head around right. it. Right. I know. I noticed that, that it yeah. is already midterms. Mm. Yep. So that's why we're going to go fast from here on out. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You deserved a better French class than this, Caitlin. But I deserved a French minor too. But <laughs> you, you totally did. We are. I. When you come back someday with your PhD, I will give you the inside analysis <laughs> of why French floundered for so many years at Nichols. Okay, so that's all. See you next week. Happy mm -hmm. Frenching. Look for that email. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and I did email you my other thing. So Okay, I'll look at it. Thank you. All right. Not bye a bye problem. Bye. Later. Bye. See you later.